guys. So today we're going to start with our first recorded lesson in the new version of Cinema, version 24. Um, you know, sometimes when they do upgrades, they change the UI user interface. That's what, you know, all these icons and menu bars are. It's called the user interface or UI. Um, they move the things around and put them in different spots and eliminate some things and add new things and try to you know, modernize it and this happens with new versions of software a lot and as you you know go through your journey of computer stuff you'll see upgrades and some of them suck and some of them are brilliant you know it's up to you um, we are unfortunately have to move out of version 20 into 24 um, because of the um, OS that Apple uses will no longer run version 20 so I'm slowly converting everything into version 24 and the lab will slowly convert over to that and um, you'll notice that a lot of the older lessons um, from last year or this year are recorded in version 20 and most of the stuff is the same I'll just say um, except that sometimes you know you might find some of the icons over here are things in different spots for instance in version 20 um, under mesh conversion is up at the top not down here at the bottom and the conversion tool over here this um, doesn't have all these other options um, so you know you can go to the side tool here and do a lot of the stuff that we used to have to go up to mesh conversion and do that way which is the long way so you'll find like I said a lot of stuff has been moved around other things are in the same spot I think if you just explore a little bit, once you learn how to do it in one way, it's not that hard to learn how to do it in another way, like version of software-wise. So um, uh, do your best to adapt. Give me a break, because I'm, uh, I'm just, you know, first time kind of like going in and trying to uh, switch these lessons over to the new version too. And so, you know, please forgive me if I grope around for a minute looking for like, where'd they stick it? Because sometimes you have to like search around and go like, okay, where did they put that option? They used to be in another spot, if you understand my meaning. Um, but basically, it's the same software with the same stuff. They just move some of the things around and other things, they kind of rearrange them. Um, that you, you commonly used in version 20, this is version 24. So our first project here, now that I'm like on with this long-winded thing of why this looks different, <laughs> is going to be a looping, like perpetual animation. It looks like a, you know, like a perpetual endless looping animation or engine. Um, so we're gonna start off with um, a new file with new and improved newness. We're gonna make a cube. The cube is going to be, um, we're gonna go over here to attributes. It says attributes there and no longer says it on the side. Um, we're gonna go to where it says object right there and we're going to make it um, 15 on the X and then 100 on the other two dimensions, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to convert it. So I would just go over here to your um, conversion uh, tool, make editable, and just make editable. And then we're going to go to your edge tool here and we're gonna select some edges. So we'll get that edge, this edge, that edge, oops. And uh, let me zoom back out. And then we're going to, I keep trying to, we've been working on ZBrush for a long time, so I keep trying to do the ZBrush shortcuts. It's like when you play a video game and you learn all the, the moves and then you play a new video game and um, you try to do the same thing when it, it's a different um, thing on the controller. So I'm going to go ahead and get that one. So we got all um, four um, Oops, looks like I deselected them by mistake. So let's get all four Did I get that one? I can't see. I did. Couldn't see. It's a little dark. Um, Alright. So we're going to go to Bevel. Bevel used to be buried under Mesh in another area, Create Tools or something. Now it's just there, so you can just go to Bevel. And uh, Bevel, we're going to go to the offset over here uh, and the subdivision. So let's subdivide it 10 times, and we'll do an offset of 10. 
So we're kind of rounding the edges there. Um, and you can expand that if you want to go up to 15. Maybe 15 looks nice, or I don't know, it's up to you. And then I'm going to go ahead and go to loop selection. And we're going to get that part. And hold down our shift key to get multiple selections. And get the other one. And then we're going to go to bevel under mesh again. And uh, this time we are going to make it maybe, you could type in the number if, you know, it starts getting crazy. Uh, we'll just make it like one centimeter. That kind of rounds off the edges. All right. So back to the modeling tool over here. Now we're going to clone. So we have, there's a cloner right here now. It's just like out in the open. Or you can go to MoGraph Cloner and put the cube in the cloner. The cloner is a default now. It clones as a grid, um, not a linear. So we're going to go put it on. Um, at this point, I'm assuming that you've done a bunch in the older version of Cinema. Um, we're going to go to Mode, and these are the types of um, uh, clones that we have available. So we're going to do a linear clone. And then we have a number of how many clones you want. So I'm going to say 50 right here. And then it has a PSR, rotate, scale, position, for how do you want the clones to move around. Right now, if you notice, they're moving upwards. Okay, and then if I go that way, I'll go like steps or whatever. So I don't want that, though. I want to go to... Um, X and I want to move them apart maybe 16 something like that so you can see uh, so they're not like touching each other but they're barely apart like that that looks pretty groovy alright now uh, a cloner gets affected by effectors so we're going to go put an effector on our cloner the trick with getting it to apply to the cloner is to have the cloner selected when you go get the effector and it'll automatically apply itself. If, however, um, you do not, there's still a way to do it. I'm going to go to plain effector and if you're like, well, did it apply? Did it not? You can click on your cloner and um, go to effector button down here and you can see there's plane. If you don't see that, you could always drag the plane and drop it right in there, and it, then it applies, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, okay. So, um, on the plane, we want to have a fall-off. A fall-off is how it kind of fades away and fades in, beginning and ending. Like, sometimes it's abrupt, or sometimes it's a slow, you know, and that kind of thing. And so, Fall off sounds like it is it's kind of a logical name. We're gonna go put it on linear field, and when you do that, it's gonna get all green like this, which I don't particularly like that color. So if you go to your color wheel, you can click on the color wheel and then just you know pick whatever color you want, and you can kind of see why does it look like it's fading? Because that's the fall off, so you can see where it'll end and begin. Okay. And um, the linear uh, field, we're going to go to coordinates, and I'm going to put it at 100 on the X. We're going to kind of move it over here. I must have moved something earlier, so, uh, or let's see, maybe the cloner, I have it. doing another direction oh the plane okay so on the plane um, transformer it's on position I don't want that so I'm going to undo that I want it to be on rotation so uh, most tra most effectors when you use them the parameters is where you kind of like make it animate. I mean, it does stuff under effector too, but um, parameters is where you can keyframe it to scale, position, or rotate and do like all the physical stuff. 
um, for the three dimensions. And so we're going to put it right there. Um, so let's place the cloner. We're going to go to uh, coordinates and let's position that at negative 100. And then we're going to position the linear field at um, 100. Like that. So negative 100 for the cloner, positive 100 for the linear field. And now we will animate it. So to animate it, we need to add about 200 keyframes to the movie. So, oops, I typed in 100. 200 keyframes to the movie. So down here, it's a look. It looks a little different. You have the um, similar frame counters and how to put more frames in your movie, or just that this looks different. And you have the same play tools and stuff like that. Same coordinate. Most of the palettes are the same. They just like kind of move the meat around on the plate as the expression goes. So, um, or the food around on the plate. Um, so let us, um, we added more frames and we're going to animate it. All right, so to animate it, we are going to animate the cloner through the linear field or the plane uh, effector. So it passes through it and causes a rotation. Um, understand? So um, we want, um, let me show you. So we want on the plane deformer rotation. The linear field we don't do anything to. And the cloner would just move it back and forth between that. So that will give us this negative and positive position will give us this endless animation. Looping animation. Alright, so let's go back. All right, so um, on the plane effector, I'm going to go to rotation, and uh, I want to rotate it. Um, you can see, like, no, nope, that's not the direction. Uh, what if it's on the, like, if you're trying to see, like, is it the P? It is the P. So we're going to go to HPB right there. Let me zoom in. And we're going to go to the P. You don't have the keyframe, and we're just going to type in 270. 200 will actually work just fine, but I like um, 270, but I like we can put it on 200. And you can kind of see it doesn't, it doesn't um, rotate as much, but it's, you know, that's fine. The numbers, like, you know, you can mess with it. We don't have the keyframe, we just have to leave it there. All right, so let's go to the cloner. The cloner is what we're gonna animate under coordinates. So we're gonna start at frame negative, uh, on the X, negative 100 on frame zero down here. So remember, we have to ha always have a beginning and an ending keyframe for all animations, which tell the computer what is it doing and when is it doing it at the beginning and what is it doing and where is it doing it at the ending, like what times. That's why we have a timeline, a linear timeline, okay? Um, so from beginning to end, we all we think in linear time anyways, unless you're a Buddhist and you think in circular time. Um, all right, so I'm going to put this scrubber, that's this little nub down here in the timeline and I'm dragging back and forth. And at frame zero, we click on the bullet and that is animated now or recorded, that keyframe. I'm going to scrub to the end, frame 200, and I'm going to put it on frame negative 300 and then hit record. All right, and let's see. Oh, uh, I must have done more than 300, because it just did cruise down. Oh, I put 1,300, dir. All right, so let's, uh, let's learn to count. I did it again. I'm going to type in very carefully so I don't screw it up. Um, 300. I had 1300. That's why I was all screwy in St. Louis. All right, so let's rewind and we'll watch it. You can kind of hear the, the noise. It's not seamless though. You see how it kind of starts over? So 
we have to make it a little bit more seamless and what we're going to do is adjust that with um, the timeline curve, F curve. So we're going to select your cloner and you're going to go to window up here in the menu bar and you're going to go down to timeline F curve and this is how you can alter the um, don't have your music, uh, your animation playing when you do this otherwise it won't show up. Um, and if you have, there's like a there's a zoom tool up here and a move tool and remember you did from frame 0 to 200 so you can kind of count you need to find this basically is this F curve and right now it's on curve curve so we're gonna put it on a linear spline so it just goes like that okay and then now we'll our whole plan is to And like I said, you know, on the linear, I mean, uh, on the plane where you were going to parameters, you can see like 200 keeps it angular over there. So I want it to be flat. So you can do like 180 or 200 or I think I was doing 270 before. And I'll find your groove over there. And if you know, if you look at the animation, let's just kind of watch it. There it is at the end. There's one little skippy thing at the end. So what I'm going to do to avoid that is, and you're going to do it too, is we should, um, let's stop the movie. We're going to go over here and we're going to put it on um, 195. So we're going to end it five frames before. And we'll just see what that looks like. It's all in the view because we don't want to like have we can't have a perpetual animation if we do this because then we'll see it all go by so what we want to do is focus um, on one spot like this so you want to find that perfect camera angle and we want to make sure we don't have any of that I'm having a little bit of a skip there. I shouldn't be doing that. There we go. That's gone. I think it was just playing catch up with the processor. All right. So I think it's pretty. It's pretty seamless now. There's one little skip. I'm gonna stop the animation. Scrub to the end here. Oh, I undid the 195. Thing. Let's try the. Let's try like 198. Just ending the movie a little bit sooner. No, let's try 201. Just have to find our perfect. Frame down there. Trying to avoid that little skip. All right, good enough. All right, so let's see. On the linear field, we have it on linear. And we have the plane on parameter rotate. Um, 
I can always try a different number there. And uh, see. Yeah, see that skips a little bit too much. Yeah, I don't know why I'm getting that little skip there, but um, I'm going to go back. All right. So let's see. What are we going to do now? Um, we're going to add our ball animation. So we're going to put a sphere on there, and you know, you can make it as big as you want to make it. It's going to be right there on the, the tippy part. And... I shouldn't have that little skip. I think it's a glitch right now. I gave it the same number as it was before. I think you'll be okay. Yeah, I'm going to make it have more segments to be smoother. We'll say like 75 or something. And like I said, you can make it as big as you want. Okay, and then to animate that, just go to coordinates, and uh, you're going to go to um, the um, clicked off of it on a stay. Let's see, I don't remember which one, so I'm going to I'm just guesstimating. Okay, the B is where we're going to record it. So at the beginning of your movie, at frame zero. I want to record a uh, zero degree on the B right there for rotation. And then at the end of your movie, put it on 360. That's all the way around. And record. Okay, and then we want the sphere. Let's stop the animation and then we'll troubleshoot that little glitch thing that I'm getting, which you shouldn't get if you follow those numbers that I did. But we're going to go to window, we're going to go to the timeline, F curve again, and uh, we need to find our rotating sphere animation. I've noticed that uh, in this new version, like, I'm not in love with this new version, by the way. I, I actually prefer the older one. There's some bugs in this one. And we need to find the F curve. I can't, it's not showing up, and that's the glitch, is the, uh, the F curve won't show up in the dope sheet. Yeah, I'm not sure if they fix that problem in a future version, but you can just go Command A and grab it all. So, you know, I like here I can I use my zoom tool. I'm kind of glad this is happening. Um, and like I try to zoom in, and I don't see it. And I want to like zoom in that way. I can zoom around. There it is. Okay, so now it's showing up. Um, you know, you just sometimes you gotta screw with it a little bit. I think that definitely is a bug that I don't particularly love. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and get both those points. And then you can see it's on the curve. So you won't put it on the linear. So you gotta do the same thing you did for the cloner. And then I'm gonna go click on my cloner. Stop the movie, go to the F curve, do or not the dope sheet, but you know it says dope sheet, and bring it up and see if you can um, I'll zoom in. Let's 
see if that helped. And then I'll come back and explain. Better adjust our camera so I don't see. Let's switch over. You can see the sphere looks in this and seamless, but for some reason I got that little teeny glitch coming out uh, right now, which I shouldn't be getting. Um, but if you do get that, we'll troubleshoot it in class. Um, what you should have, and we'll go look at one that I did earlier, best laid plans, is a seamless animation. see it just keeps resetting and it doesn't look there's not much of it here's a, if you really stare at it you can see the tiniest little pause like a split nanosecond or something but the other one shouldn't have that so remember your sphere you're going to animate it from 0 to 195 uh, three, 0 degrees to 360 on the keyframes and then on the cloner, you're going to position it at negative 100 at the beginning and negative 300 at the ending. Um, I, mine is at 295 because I ended it earlier, and which might be why it's not skipping. Um, and then uh, we're going to go to add a plane effector to the cloner with a linear field. The linear field, you don't do anything to unless you want to change its color. Um, you can go to color remap and click on the color wheel and pick a new color. Um, and just because if it looks crappy to you. Uh, and then under plane effector, we're just going to rotation and putting it on 270 for rotation. 200 to 270, um, you can fiddle with it and see what you like. Uh, and you don't have to really do anything else. And then we add our materials and a physical sky, and we are good to go for our um, uh, illusion of perpetual looping animation. And the loop happens because the cloner is moving one direction, part and like a, just a section, it's moving, uh, well, the whole thing's moving, but it's uh, being affected by the linear field, which is in a specific spot, and then the, the cloner is going the opposite direction as it animates, and it falls within our little time thing. And then also that we went to the um, timeline F curve, and uh, we got rid of that. Um, we made that F curve linear instead of a curve. This part is a problem. It may or may not show up, and so like you have to kick it in the butt like I did, where I had to like zoom in and out to get it to show up because uh, sometimes it may not appear and it'll just glitch up on you. And then you might be asking, like, why are we using this version then? Well, they've since probably fixed these errors, but this is the oldest version um, that still has, or this is the newest version that still has a relatively similar GUI or UI user interface to what you know. And so I don't want to, like, dive into the new one, the new one, the brand new one that has a completely different user interface. It really looks different it, and, uh, and the learning curve will be a little bit, I don't want to start at, you know, the basics again when you already know how to do a lot of this stuff. And this one's very similar. So we'll just have to put up with a few little minor bugs here and there. Otherwise, it's not terrible. It's a pretty good upgrade for the most part. Uh, and we're going to do, we're going to do our motion graphics project um, using the new version, I think. All right, so that ends the lesson. Goodbye.